The Wendigo Colossus is a new boss introduced with the Fallout 76 Wastelanders DLC, but he is not so easy to find. However, there is a way to make things more convenient for everyone. Let me show you what must be done. Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 guide. In this one, I am going to show you how to easily find the Wendigo Colossus, especially if you do regular nukes or often find the Scorch Earth event active in your servers. As you surely know by now, the Wendigo Colossus was a highly anticipated new enemy. It was even featured in all the Wastelanders trailers. However, now that it is live, most people feel disappointed about it. After all, you need to do a lot of things and get really lucky to find it. And the rewards are, well, also disappointing. Bethesda is planning on releasing a new event featuring this creature in the near future, but until that happens, we can only spawn the Colossus by nuking conflict random encounter spawns across the map. Even then, the chance is minimal, so here's a legit strategy on how to find it more often. I know most of you have never even fought one yet, so I hope I will be able to change that. Let's begin! Before we go over the details, let me tell you that the Wendigo Colossus can spawn in any conflict random encounter spawn in the map. It has about 5-6% to chance to spawn once nuked and there are almost 30 different spawns in the entire map. People usually nuke this location south of the Huntersville because there are two close spawns for the Colossus. However, there is no other purpose for the nuke if you choose this location. Most of the time you are just wasting a nuclear key cards, ammo, time, effort and so many other things. That's why you should go for the groove near the Prime Fisher instead. This will not increase your chances to find one, but it will surely make things easier and more convenient. So, every time you do a silent run to start the Scorch Earth event, make sure to include the overgrown Sandu Groove together with the Prime Fissure inside your nuke radius. You should slowly turn this action into a routine in order to improve your gameplay with the Wastelanders DLC. Why or how can this benefit you, you may ask? If you nuke both locations, you will always start a queen fight, claim the rewards for the Scorch Earth event as well, and then you also get a chance to spawn the Wendigo Colossus. If it ends up spawning, well, amazing, it's a small extra for you and for everyone with you. If something else spawns instead, well, that's also fine, it's not like you are going to lose anything. Maybe a minute or two to check the entire groove and that's it. Remember to check it after you do the queen though, I feel like most people forget about this. And who knows, maybe the Wendigo Colossus will be there waiting for you inside the forest. It usually spawns near the old shack, so you need to go deep inside the groove to make sure it spawns or not. Now, the trick here is to check the groove every 10 to 15 minutes, but there are a few things you must do. First, kill the spawn random encounter so a new one can spawn later. You will find all sorts of creatures fighting in this conflict location, like glowing ghouls, super mutants, marluks, gulpers, ants, and so many other enemies. You can even place your survival tent nearby for quick access. However, once you kill the spawn wave, don't stay there. Don't just sleep or wait around for 10 minutes or the random encounter may not spawn. I did this twice so far and nothing spawned while I was there. But as soon as I fast traveled away and came back, the encounter instantly respawned. Anyway, you will often find a 3 stars legendary boss in this location, while nuked at least. I usually find one every 3 or 4 spawns, so it's also not a bad spot to farm legendaries. If the spawn is empty, it often means another player has recently cleared the place. 
The chance for a Wendigo Colossus to spawn is indeed very low. It's around 6% Wally, but that doesn't mean it's impossible to find the creature. I have encountered him three times in the past few days using this method. If you are really lucky, you only need to check the groove a few times and you will find what you are looking for. Sometimes the nuke wears off and you never get to find him though. It is like that, random encounters can be very frustrating, but it is the way it works right now. Just make sure to check around the old shack, he always spawns there, well, whenever the spawn triggers, of course course. Now, it's not so easy to see around here with the nuke blast and the groove effects, so make sure to spam your vats while checking the area to quickly spot him from afar, otherwise you might miss him, especially if you are checking the place in stealth. He doesn't make a lot of noise either, I almost missed him once, I thought the spawn was empty, but he was there, standing still, waiting to be killed. Alright, so the Wendigo Colossus is not like the Scorch Beast Queen, it's much weaker. It's also not as weak as the Imposter Sheep Squatch. I would say it's a boss between the two of them. You can perfectly kill the Colossus with just a few people though, but you need to know what to do first. So this new boss has four different attacks, a melee attack, a corrosive spit, a wendigo spawn and a scream that forces your character to panic. The first three skills can easily kill you, so the key strategy here is to avoid the attacks as much as possible. When you are in panic, you can't control your character, so for this one, there's nothing much you can do, sadly. Moving on, the Colossus is a bullet sponge with high defense. He has a 30k HP and he always spawns as a level 93 stars a legendary boss. Unlike the Scorch Beast Queen, who has the same HP, he doesn't have any damage mitigation passives. Anyway, the Wendigo spawns can be very nasty. They usually come from behind, and usually when you spot them, it's a bit too late. Note that dying here can be a hassle. You might respawn inside the nuked area far away or get stuck with the respawn bug. So try your best not to die or you may lose his loot. Now, about the melee and the spit attacks, they hurt a lot, and for bloodied builds, half HP won't be enough to survive one landed hit. So, make sure to keep a distance or fight with high HP, just for the sake of this fight, and to assure you can loot the Wendigo Colossus when he falls down. Now, let me give you some tips to survive and kill the Colossus faster. Regardless of your build or level, make sure to use the nearby trees as cover. Mm -hmm, that's clever, no? The Wendigo Colossus is a giant and he can't really hit you if you move around the trees. He misses his melee attacks a lot with this strategy. His spit can also miss, but you need to take proper cover for this one to happen. If the spit touches you slightly, you are probably going down rather quickly. Make sure to use steam packs and reload behind cover as well. Now, it's important to keep an eye on your back because lots of Wendigo spawns will appear around the boss quite often as well. They can jump on you and do lots of damage, so be careful. Don't forget to loot them later for lots of screws and acid. Finally, spam your attacks on him whenever he's focusing another player. He goes down quite fast when you are firing no stop. It's just you often need to take cover, kill the spawns or you are unable to move from the scream. So all of that together can delay his death, but that doesn't mean he's a difficult boss to kill. That's really not the case. What about goodies? You can get a list of rewards from the Wendigo Colossus, but sadly, nothing impressive. For starters, you always get lots of caps. I think the standard is 100 to 150 caps, but the number can vary a lot. In my last Colossus fight, for example, I collected 500 caps from his body, so I know it can go up to at least 500 caps. That's an impressive number, don't you think? 
On the other hand, in the other two fights, I collected 150 caps from each boss. Anyway, there are a few other fixed rewards, such as a 1 to 3 stars random legendary piece, his vocal sack, which has no real use right now, but looks amazing in display cases, as well as super steam packs, screws, ballistic fiber, and fiber glass. That's pretty much it, really. Thankfully, they are going to add this boss to a future event, because right now it's such a waste of content. Anyway, for the time being, getting 500 caps is not such a bad reward for killing him. Too bad you can't always loot hundreds of caps per fight. Oh well, it is what it is. Whether you are trying to find the Wendigo Colossus or not, this is still a great way to maximize your profits. Most veteran players do silo runs and it really doesn't hurt to include the overgrown groove inside the nuked area. As I said before, you can only benefit from this small action. The Queen and the Scorch Earth event are always going to spawn. The random element here is the Colossus, which may or may not spawn during the time the nuke will be active. Then again, you don't even have to check the groove every 10 minutes. You can only check it once or twice and that's it. Maybe you are lucky, I can vouch for it. One of my Colossus fights was because I checked the groove 10 minutes after a queen fight and there he was. Just remember you can earn hundreds of caps per colossus kill, a random legendary item as well and lots of screws. I think this should be included in every veteran player's daily routines, especially if you launch nukes and do queens on a regular basis. Again, you have nothing to lose by doing this. I know some of you already knew that the Wendigo Colossus can spawn in the overgrown groove, after all, there was a post of a reddit with over a thousand of likes not too long ago, but most players don't check reddit, plus I have seen a lot of people nuking only the prime fisher, which makes me believe not a lot of people know about this small trick just yet. Well, I hope you learned something new with this guide, I wish you good luck finding the Wendigo Colossus as well, if you haven't found him yet. It can be challenging sometimes, but it's really not impossible. I am Marta Branco, thank you so much for watching, leave a like and comment below if you have any questions. That's going to be everything for now, make sure to subscribe for more if you enjoyed the content, and feel free to support me even further by becoming a member or a patron. The links are always in the description box. Now I will see you all very, very soon in the next video. Until then, take care, adios, bye bye!